another thing that we provide for being able to insert um, data manually into, or sorry, as an external source, not just as a manual entry from what we do in, 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 in interface is using something like the data controllers. So through here, one of, the, one of the workflows we've done in the past is pretty much, and is still supported, is being able to read directly from a spreadsheet. So in a sense, what you would do is, let's say I'll bring up a spreadsheet here as an example. You would pretty much build out your spreadsheet exactly the way multi-entry is laid out. So we kind of examine this particular graphic here. We can see that we have name one, image one, position one, uniform one, and stat label one. We would then initialize all these column headers to kind of match the way that multi-entry is laid out. So we would do something like name one. There might be some discrepancies between what I just said, but we can just kind of pretend that this is accurate to what is multi-entry. Then below those header columns that we initialized, we would then type out the consecutive records of information that we want to apply directly onto our graphic. So for example, I can put just two, two columns for now. We'll go ahead and put Sean Wilm on there. And then we can put our uniform numbers to be random information. There we go. And then we simply save this file, pick a location of our desire to save this to. I'll pick at the desktop since it's a little easy to find. And now we can then select the, the data controller. So I'll go ahead and step back a little bit and do it from the beginning. Under the general category, we'll navigate to spreadsheet generate a new input and then select a file. From here, then we navigate to the location where that was saved. We just named it as book one and we'll see that under the layer properties window or panel, we get a third tab. This is going to be our external data controller, which is spreadsheets along with the actual name of the sheet that I connected it to. Now we actually have two sets of information that we can then access to then apply directly onto the graphic. So we see here that only the name field and the uniform are updating because those are the only fields that I prepared data for on that external document. The other solutions that we offer are also in terms of the data controllers. However, we find that a lot of people often have an XML sheet that's being produced by the venue or some other solution that they're currently subscribed to. So there are two ways of accessing that information. One is via XML. So this will simply um, fetch an XML file that you point it to. And then once that XML file is connected, you will get all the initialized variables. So there's two, there's two things that can happen in your XML document that Tire Live will recognize. One is an initialized variable in an XML. So this is pretty much saying that, you know, the value of score for visitor or home is now being initialized within that sheet. And then there is a value assignment that belongs to that initialized variable. So the two things that we'll find are the variable that's initialized and the value assignment to that variable. And you'll see that all broken down here once we connect the document. So we'll see that so for something like the check names here, we have three different um, player names. And then we can also see for the actual team, we have two different names, CSP and WSC. So we can go ahead and let me go ahead and hit none and only connect the XML to this one. Select that. So now we only have the XML connected. And let's say, for example, we, we wanna start linking some of these data components directly to the graphic. We can see that all this blue text here is indicated as not assigned. So we can just go ahead and find a field that we would want to connect. So we can click on this little blue for check name and then assign it, assign it to our header. And we can do something like the team and connect it to the uniform. Now, when we, we're going to see a quick render happen, pretty much what this render is doing is it's caching all the information that these possible fields could represent that is being sent directly from our XML document. So now when we send this graphic live, and if I switch between these different rows of information, so clicking on any of these rows from any of the cells will actually send that information. But we will see all the corresponding row data being populated onto those fields into the graphic. And you can use things like images, like for example, to also be, to instruct a certain record of information to be relative to an image in your textures folder, for example, for your projects. It is a little, there is a very specific way of doing this. And Sean, if you remember correctly, those, the, the way of setting that up to re, have an XML document um, read images from your textures folder. Yeah, <clears throat> um, so the way it works is that 
Tidler Live actually looks for images with the name of player initial last name dot png. So in the case of, would you mind scrolling? Oh, we've got the names right there. Yeah. So in the name of, um, let's see, we've got Hoskins Katie. You would just make sure to include an image called H K A T. Or sorry, K H O S K I N S dot png inside the either the root folder of the Tyler Live project or a folder nested within it called textures. Exactly. And that's going to be the textures folder that has all the textures for all your graphics. The way it works is that Tyler Live looks in a, a few different locations uh, to find different uh, sources, different files that you're using. In the case of images, I believe it prioritizes looking for the textures, the root folder first, and then it looks under textures. And then it looks under the C downloads, yeah. program content, et cetera, et cetera. And the textures folder is a relative path, correct? So if you were to move this uh, project, uh, let's say, for example, you zipped up your entire folder that contains all your assets and you moved it to a different, through a USB to a different machine and then offload it to that desktop, since it's a relative path, those connections will still be maintained from data controller and maybe any graphic you already have loaded. That is correct. Um, we did get a question from a Adam Walthall here. Walthall, Walthall, sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Uh, are these features only available in Tidler Live 5? So I think when you are discussing the features, maybe yeah. try to. So we do, so that just kind of to walk through the actual data controllers. So XML is available through Tidler Live 4. You might want to look at our um, actual breakdown to see which specific data controllers belong to sport or broadcast, but we can kind of step through these right now. So spreadsheet is available for, for, for Tidler Live 4 as well and 5. We can see under sports specifically, there's certain things that are only available in five, those being scoreboard tool two and stats crew, stat crew stats two and stat crew and stat crew scoreboards tool. You'll still have access on Tire Life 4 to something like stat crew scoreboards. However, you would need Tire Life 5 or Tire Life 4 broadcast to get access to stat crew stats. So there are some differentiations there. Uh, and if you're using something like a sports cast workflow or you want to use your Dactronics with a sports bot, you do have sports cast in Tire Life 4 and Tire Life 5. Something else like New Tech Data Link is also available in Tire Life 4 and 5 with the particular sports edition or on broadcast. 